what it is that we're supposed to be, the light in the midst of the darkness. You know, if we consider scripture yeah, and the children of Israel, you know, the problem that the children of Israel had was that, that they were freed. They were freed from, from their bondages, right? Freed from Egypt. And, and the mandate, the primary mandate, or the, basically the only mandate that they were given, you know, by God through the prophet was that, that do not, do not um, embrace the gods of the inhabitants in whose land you dwell. So, so as you leave bondage, as I take you out of this place where you are, and I, I take you along this path to this place where I want you to be, you're going to be crossing paths with a lot of different type of people, and, and you are not to, to embrace, you're not to embrace the gods of, of the inhabitants in whose land you'll be dwelling, you know, in the process, in, the, in your journey. And, and see, for us today, you know, as we look back at those scriptures, and, and we try to believe those scriptures, we say, well, the gods, you know, that's why all these other religions are wrong. You know, and I'm not worshiping, you know, a, a, an image or a graven, you know, idol or something like that, something carved out of wood or carved out of stone. But what I want to suggest to you is, is, is when we apply those, when we apply those, those scriptures, you know, especially that scripture as far as, as not embracing the gods of the inhabitants in whose land, well, I think we need to understand that it's not simply the images that they would be worshiping as gods. But, but it would be their value system, you know, their, 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 their cultural values. And, and so that's what you found, you found uh, that would really irritate God, you know, as far as Scripture is concerned, in Old Testament Scripture regarding Israel, is that wherever they would travel, they would begin adopting the customs and the characteristics, the beliefs and the value systems of the people where they were dwelling. So it wasn't so much that they were actually worshiping their gods, you know, they did some of that as well. But they are actually taking on the characteristics of those people, taking on their value systems. And, and what I'm suggesting today is we correlate that to today. We need to recognize that even in this political, you know, fray that we have, that, that when we begin to adopt attitudes that are contrary to the attitudes that are put forth by Jesus, we, we find ourselves straying from being Christian. And we're still a Christian because we're still affiliated, just like Israel was still Israel. But they begin embracing the gods of the inhabitants, the, the, the values and the, the cultural uh, desires and, and, and habits of the inhabitants in whose land they dwell. And I think that's where we have come today. Okay? And so, so, so you know, it's, it, in all fairness to the Pope, I believe, what, you know, we can be a Christian because we've all signed on to this thing, okay? Um, but are we Christian? Okay. I think that's very important. And as we even begin to look at this thing, just for a little bit of backup, okay. <laughs> uh, turn to the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, the starting in the 43rd verse. It says, you have heard that it has been said you will love your neighbor and hate your enemy. I mean, isn't that where we're at today? Especially in America, we, we, we love our neighbors. We're supposed to, you know, really. You know, we love half our neighbors if they think like us or look like us. But, 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 but we love our neighbors. And we hate our enemies. And oh, we hate our enemies. Yeah, we do. Hate, hate these folks or those folks and all this stuff. It says. Now, this is Jesus talking, okay? Jesus says, you have heard that it has been said that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, Jesus says, but I say, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. And sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same. And if you salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Not even the publicans so. Now, this is very important here. With the point, then in verse 45, it says, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. Now, they're already the children of their Father which is in heaven. As it pertains to this conversation, they're already a Christian. But, but do you want to be Christian? Do you want to be Christian? I think it's sort of like our children today, how, how there are children by blood, but, but as they begin to, to, to walk after our desires, as they begin to be successful by making the right moves and doing the right things, there's, there's like this special pride that you have in your child. Look, that's my child. That, this is my child, listen. And you can even take your child, you know. Now how, does, how, does an individual, how does an individual learn 
or even what they've learned, how does that, that knowledge or that learning get solidified in them or get strengthened in them? It's by their ability to teach what they've learned. So, so, so if I take, teach my child something very simple, and, and then that my child teaches someone else, they get stronger. I saw that in the martial art growing up, you know, where back in the old days, uh, I don't know how it is today, where, where you start the martial arts, you're a white belt, and then, then you become whatever the next belt is, a yellow belt or something, and then the next belt, a, uh, a, a purple belt or a green belt or whatever, and so on and so on. What, what I always loved about the martial art is they took, so even if you were a white belt and you had been in for, say, five weeks and someone was just brand new, they would have that person teach the next person at least how to punch. And, and so all along the path of, of, of matriculation in the martial art, you, you not only were, were a student, but you were also a teacher. And, and, in, and teaching what you've learned, at first it builds your confidence. But as well, it, it perfects, it perfects whatever it is that you, that you already know how to do as you're teaching that to someone else. Because everybody loves to teach. Everybody loves to show somebody something. And, and so when you have finally the responsibility to actually show somebody something, you, you have even this mental desire to do it well, to do it better. So, so there's like a subconscious uh, determination within you to perfect even what you already have simply because there's someone else for you to teach. And, and, and so always throughout the martial art, even, even up into the highest echelons of the martial art, you're always, always a student and always a teacher. And, and it's sort of like it works hand in hand. And, and it's great that way. And so, so the father, when he's talking about the father being, you know, the children of your father, it's your father is now proud that, that you could be used to demonstrate to others. But we, we find ourselves so often, you know, you know, affiliating ourselves and being a Christian and not being Christian. Because it's very difficult to love our enemies. Uh, it's, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to, to love outside of those within our particular uh, set of beliefs and, and, and uh, values. But it's very important for us to get back, get back to the way things work. Because we, we need to realize, especially as believers, that there, there are consequences. Now, I believe God loves us. God always loves us. But I believe God loves all human beings. And, and so as far as we stretch, and, and I think that the problem is, is, is how we begin responding to other people. So you see, we've drawn this line in the hand, especially as, as Christians, especially as Euro-American Christians, we've drawn this line in the sand saying, be a Christian or you're going to hell. But, but what I want to suggest to you is it's, it's not about being a Christian or you're going to hell. I don't, I don't think it's about going to hell, actually. But, but I think the point is not being a Christian, it's being Christian, okay? And, and so, so I find that there are, there are people that are, that are, that are, are Buddhists that are, that are Christian. I, I have a friend, he, he's Buddhist, he's from Vietnam, a great guy, a real hardworking man, a good man, will do anything for you, will help you, and has, has a tremendous work ethic. He is, he is the most Christian non-Christian that I have ever met in my life. There are people that are, that are Muslims that are Christian as far as the, as far as the attitude. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and that might be an insult to them, but I'm, I'm speaking basically to, to Christians right now to give you an insight and understanding that being Christian, what we call Christian, being Christ-like, striving to be good, striving after the attributes of Jesus doesn't have anything to do with your religious affiliation. It has to do with the goodness of your heart. And the scripture talks about the Jew. You know, talks speaking to the Jew. The Jew isn't the Jew outwardly, it's the Jew inwardly. It's the same principle. It's a principle, it's not, not what you've affiliated yourself with, not, not who you are. It's not who you are. It's what you are. That's important. And so I've been, I've been on this journey, and it's a very difficult journey trying to, to help people, trying to, 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 to bring folks together of different religions. And I've even put a form out there, Wellsprings AP on Facebook, a Facebook community page that, that, that I'm, I'm trying to attract people from, from, from that, that are Hindus, people that, that, are, that have embraced Islam, people that are Christians, people that, that aren't any religion at all, but just recognize there is a spirituality in us and, that, and, 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 and realizing in that spirituality that we all do embrace, that that is the connection that we have. 
And, and so there, there is a source from which uh, creation emanates. And I think that's what I believe. I think that's what most people believe. Even from a scientific uh, perspective, if you're talking about from the primordial goo, you know, you know whatever you, you have determined the source of, of creation, the source of mankind's creation, that there is a relationship that we have one to another, okay? And so then from a scientific perspective, it's because we all emanate from that. We are all really. We know that, even from a DNA perspective. But then from a religious perspective, we recognize that as well. You know, from the source of, of whatever the creation is, we are all related, of course. And, and so I was, you know, speaking to this the other day in the community, and this guy chimed in, you know, of course we're related because we all come from Adam, you know. Now that's from a religious perspective. So my response to the gentleman was, yes, you know, Adam, we all come from the first man, whatever his name was. You know, and so from one particular religious perspective, that name is Adam. And that's fine. But, but I think the point is that we, we must come to realize is that there is a source from creation, you know, from, from a religious perspective, that, or from a spiritual perspective, that, that we have to agree upon preceded religion, okay? And then we have to recognize that once the creation manifested, man, human creation, still that was prior to religion. So, so whatever religious affiliations that we have, I am a Christian, I am a Muslim, I am a Hindu, I am a Buddhist, whatever, that, that is a religious affiliation that was created after the source, after man was created. We, then we gravitated toward these religions. What I'm saying is, you know, sort of like our math concept is begin to reduce it down to the lowest common denominator. And that lowest common denominator, of course, is God, the source from creation, or whatever the source is. He was the primordial goo, the source. But then, but then us, the relationship that we have one to another simply because we have emanated from the same source, we are all related to each other. And that's, that's the lowest common denominator. And that's what we need to realize. That's what we need to gravitate toward. And recognizing that whatever religious affiliation that we have attached ourselves to, those were the things that we have chosen to attach ourselves to, and that is fine if it helps. But, but even as we discussed last week, whatever our, our religious affiliations are, those are the things that we believe, we have chosen to believe. None of those things we know. Now, now I am a minister, I'm a pastor in the Christian religion, okay? And, but, but, what, this is, but what I see is I am this because this is the, the society and the culture in which I was raised. This is the family in which I was raised. This is what I was introduced to, and that is fine. But, but I have to recognize that still this is what I have chosen to believe. What, what, and, 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 and as far as knowing, we don't know. Now, now what I more know, what I believe I more know, is that there is God, Allah, Yahweh, Eli. The name, again, uh, is based on and what we choose to call this source is based on the religion and the culture that we are particularly living in. But, 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 that, but that source preceded these beliefs that we have adopted. And I'm saying that we have to come to this place of commonality. We have to come to the place of realizing what our, what our sameness is what, and, and, and embrace that. And so I could take a guy that's maybe maybe a Buddhist, okay? And and he is he is meditating. Just chilling, you know, meditating, meditating, getting there and, and, and attaining particular uh, feelings of wellness and, and seeing and understanding certain things through his meditation. And and then I can be praying slash meditating. And, and begin to see things, coming to a reality of things that, that, that I maybe didn't know or maybe I'm not understanding or receiving. And, and what I see is our, our source of information, our source of enlightenment is the same source. I call my source the word of God that resides within me, that still small voice. He calls his, you know, whatever, this, this insight he got from meditation. But to me, it's the same Jesus, okay, it's from my perspective. And then from his perspective, it's something else. But whatever it is, it's the same. And as long as it's, it's ushering into his mind good, as long as it's opening his mind up to something good, I see it as the same. 
And maybe it's because of, of my perspective has to do with how I came into this thing. Of course, as I've shared in so many programs, you know, I was raised in the church as a kid, left home at 17, joined the military, was an atheist for like 10 years. Until that cold night, I couldn't sleep one day. Instead of a buzz, I thought I'd just read this old Bible just for a joke. And as I opened this Bible, I started reading in less than one minute, maybe 40 seconds. Also, I just believed, I knew there was God. So, so it wasn't the words that I was reading because I wasn't even reading for more than a minute. It, it was the reality of, of that source of creation, of God, of Allah, Yahweh, Eli spoke and said, Martin, I am real. That was it for me. It was, like, it was almost like, 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 like Saul, the Apostle Paul, and his Damascus experience. It was like, you know, if you're really there, I have to serve you. And that's what I said that day. I was 28 then. I'll be 58 this year. It was, it was that real, that when, when, when you have an encounter like that, it is so life-changing. I mean, I was, I was a guy that was really out there, you know, really in the clubs, every single night of the week, always buzz, always you know, that kind of lifestyle. Changed. It wasn't, it wasn't just anymore a, a belief in a religion that I was raised in with. Because that didn't last. It won't hold you. And, and that's the issue I think that we have. That's why we fail so often. That's why we just, we just turn our backs on it or just give up or we could be hating people or whatever because we've just affiliated ourselves with a religion. But when you come to terms with actually being introduced to, to that source of creation, it changes. What I'm suggesting today is a lot of our differences, a lot of our divisiveness. It's simply that we have taken the religions that we have affiliated ourselves with and, 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 and determined that, that they are the only way and anything else is an error. Now, how do you do that? How, how can you take something that you have simply chosen to believe and, and then proclaim that everyone who hasn't chosen to believe what you have chosen to believe is wrong? You can't, and every religion does that. We have to recognize that, that we are related prior to the religions, that, that we are children of God, children of Allah, children of Yahweh, children of Eli, children of the source of creation, and we are brothers and sisters related one to another. I think that's the only place that our hope is going to come from. You see these religions that, that have divided us, religions that have even been the, the excuses for war, for murder, for hate, even nowadays. Oh, we hate Muslims. Muslims might hate Christians. You know, we got all this stuff going on. Because, because we are human beings. You know, the, 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 the older you are, the greater you are. So what is the oldest is the source of creation? God, Allah, Yahweh, you. Great. Undefinably great. Okay. But then we have man that was next. That was great. That is great because mankind has been here so long. But then we have religions, and they're okay. They're great too. But man is greater than religion. God is greater than man. Man is greater than religion. Yet man has used religion to justify himself, to, to justify evils, to justify wickedness, to justify even self-deprecation and, and self-denial and, and all kinds of negativities toward other people and toward himself. Man is greater than religion. Yet we have taken this religion and placed it greater than man. Now see, I understand even the concept of religion, even the goodness of religion, that it helps an individual to, 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 to be structured. It gives a, an individual maybe a set of rules and regulations to, 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 to help determine that they're still on the right path, to keep them going the right direction. And, and so a religion in that respect is good as long as it serves the man. But, but when the man begins serving the religion, that's when it becomes corrupt. And that's what we have today. I am a Christian, so I have to hate a Muslim. I am a Muslim, so I have to hate a Christian. I am a Jew, so I have to hate a Muslim. I am a Muslim, so I have to hate a Jew. I am a Buddhist. I am a Hindu. I, whatever, all these things. Those, those are not what you are. Those are who you are. And, and when, we, when, we, when we try to fashion ourselves into into the religious affiliation, into who we are. That's how we get to who we are. But, but who we are is not what we are supposed to be. And, and so, so my, for, for my litmus test, for me personally, 
is, is taken from the words of Jesus, who when asked what the greatest commandment, and he said two, he said the greatest is to love God with all your, all your heart, with all your being. And, and the second commandment, only second to this greatest commandment, right there close to it, is to love your neighbor, your fellow human being, as you love yourself. So that's the litmus test. For, for me, what, what I have gleaned from Scripture, Jesus, well, you have to be a Christian. You have to be a Baptist. You have to be a Pentecostal. You have to belong to the PAW. You have to be a Methodist. You have to be this. No, I didn't go there. You have to be a Jew. He didn't go there either. Jesus really didn't push any particular religion. He was just, actually, he was pushing back from the religion because the religions, the folks had bought into the religions. And the religions were, I guess, initially good to help people be right, to help people do right, to even predict the coming of the Messiah and all this stuff from a Christian person, from a, a Judeo-Christian perspective. But then it got to the point where even that which the religion was created to usher in was rejected by the religions. I mean, come on now, we're doing that today. And I'm, I'm just suggesting that as we begin to really examine ourselves now and, and recognize or just ask ourselves, are we a Christian or are we Christian? Very important, very important. That we make sure that you know, I was speaking to a, a minister friend of mine so many years ago and he made this statement to me that always stuck with me that the book of Acts was never completed or ne because it's still going on today so it can't be finished. So even the lives that we are living today is a continuation of the book of Acts. And so, so my question, you know, as we look back, even as we're looking back in Scripture, doing our little Bible studies and all, and, and we see those that persecuted the believers, those that persecuted those that had relationship with Jesus, those that persecuted Jesus, the, those that had, had embraced their religion so strongly that, that it moved them to, to begin mistreating people to where Jesus had to come out here in, in the book of Matthew and the 43rd chapter and, and say to the folks, the 6th chapter, the 43rd verse, it said, now, now imagine this. Now, now why in the world? Now, now you have a religion that, that is to embrace God. That, that is supposed to be adhering to the tenets and the teachings of God through the prophets and all this stuff. Believing that, that, that God is our father, the father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob, and all this stuff, that he is our father, and, and that we desire to do everything that our father wants us to do and all. Then, then why would Jesus have to tell the religious people to love your enemies and bless them that curse you to do good to them and hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you? What is, why would Jesus have to do that? I mean, for real. I mean, I mean, when you when you when we read this stuff, we have to recognize that this is not written to the world. That's why it's so ridiculous as believers. We got here trying to make people in the world try to adhere to the tenets of the scripture. Oh, don't don't drink. Uh, don't have abortions. Uh, don't do this. Don't do that. All these things that we are trying to get the world to do. This stuff wasn't written to the world. This stuff was written to us. Jesus is talking to religious folks about loving their enemies. So I'm suggesting today, before we take this book right here and start going out and trying to make people live not outside of the, the religion to live to what we have determined this is supposed to be saying, we got to check ourselves. We're not. Jesus was talking to the religious folks. Jesus was talking to us. And he's talking to you right now and me. That, that we have a way to go. A ways to go. To be Christian. And that there are many Christians that are not affiliated with the Christian religion. And that there are many that are affiliated with the Christian religion that are not Christian. And we need to just begin to think about this. 
Begin to really, don't, don't satisfy for, for that childhood version of, 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 of Christianity that you were raised with. But begin to look deeper into it, into the historical, uh, in a historical context. Where the religion came from. What it had been used for historically. And how has it evolved outside and beyond the teachings of Jesus? And, and in closing, I want to share with you, this is nothing new. Because if it were, Jesus would not have been telling them then that they need to love their neighbor, that they need to love their enemies, that they need to... They need to they need to begin seeing their fellow human beings as God, their Father, sees them. How's that?